Who deserves to get the prize? But I have lots more to tell you when I get back. So until a few moments, see you in a little bit. God bless. Good night, everyone. Good night again. It's time for our song service section. And we're going to start off with number 579. 579. Tis love that makes us happy. Tis love that's. Number 286, 286, sing them over again to me, wonderful words of life. Let me more of their beauty see, wonderful words of life. Thank you. 
says, I can't be part of this pageant because we're selecting the best dressed person in white. But when I look at myself and the matching shoes, I think I'll win, right? Well, can't be part of this. I 
And so I have to try it out to the next best dressed person in white. So if you think you have on the best outfit in white, Sister Charmaine, you look like you were in competition with me, you know. So we're going to invite everybody in white. Come, 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 come. Come. Wait till you want to wear white and you are shy. Jadisha, come. Come, Miss Christopher. Come, let's just shave her on. Come. Yes, I need you up here. Come, you're all dressed in white. Let's go. Let's go, let's go. Ushers, if you're in all white, platform personnel in all white, come, we need the white people up here. We need Dr. White up here too, you know. She's just representing the color white because she named white. Let's go, let's have all the ladies in white. Hey, Asha, come join us up here. Come, let's go. My platform personnel, I don't believe we have so much shy people in Janice Church. Let's go, let's have the ladies in white. This is how many have to come up, you know. Let's go, let's cheer them all up. So we have our ladies in white. There's one gentleman in white. So we're going to invite the one gentleman to come up as well. He's already the winner since he's the only male in all white. Come, brother Joe, come, 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 come. Let's go. And in the meantime, we're going to ask you to vote. So audience, by your applause, you're going to let me know who is the lady who is best dressed in white. So we're starting with Sister Parker Dawn. If you think she's the best dressed, let's give her a round of applause. All right. Testing the thermometer. Sister Charmaine. So like the two of them tied here, right? Our dear visitor friend here, our guest. one here at the end to take this seat. Come a little closer. So let's vote again. So if you think it's this person, let me hear you. Is it this one? This one? I can't determine. So both of them win. So head Asha, we're going to ask you to bring them both a gift. And we want to say from such a time as this, empowerment series now we want to say congratulations on being the best dress in white. Let's give it up for them. One thing about this empowerment series, we're about giving gifts. Anybody can tell me, what is tonight's topic? I can't hear. How to live your best life. How to live your best life? To the is sure. You don't know? Make up your mind. How to live your best life or living your best life? Well, y'all are getting no prize because y'all are good students. I'm a teacher here. Y'all are getting no gift tonight. Anyhow, we are rolling quickly to an end. I'm coming off the stage just now. But just some pointers. No. There was a Anybody here know how to walk on water? Anybody know somebody who can walk on water? Who is that person who can walk on water? Jesus. Jesus. Well, there's a very, Peter? Well, he tried, but did he walk successfully? How was he able to walk? Because of Jesus. So the only way you can walk on water is through Jesus. Well, there's a powerful devotional series entitled Walking on Water. Now, our ushers on the outside, they have them for you. I can't tell you the price, but you can discuss it. It is written by our evangelist, and she is offering you a devotional book that you can have for yourself, or you can give as a gift, but trust me, it's powerful. Anybody wants one of those books? 
Come, let me see your hands. I can't tell you the price. You have to speak to the ushers outside. But I'm telling you, you need to leave here with that book you have. Tonight to purchase it, and tomorrow evening. Nothing happening on Friday night. So please, do not let our evangelist return with her devotional book, Walking on Water. Have you been having a good time out here every night? I can't hear you all are song. That's not convincing. Have you been having a good time out here every night? Do you agree with me that every night the evangelist takes it a notch higher? If you believe it, say higher. higher. Do you believe she's going to go higher tonight? Yes. So let me hear you say amen for Jesus. Amen. Right, so we are coming back here tomorrow evening. What did I say we're coming back here when? Yes. We don't normally don't like Thursday night session. But if we're honest, we have missed quite a few nights. And to make up, we have to fit in Thursday night. So what we're going to do, we're going to do our washing early in the morning. Y'all agree? The things that we normally do, we're going to go to the supermarket during our lunch hour. So have your list prepared because we're coming back out tomorrow night. We can't have this without you. And so we're inviting everybody to plan to be here tomorrow night. Tomorrow's night topic is Gaza Encounter. What did I say it is? What is happening in the Middle East? What is happening in Palestine and, and Israel will be discussed tomorrow night. If you want to know all about it, you've got to be here. Don't let me tell you. You've got to be here. And so, once again, we just want to thank you for being a good sport. Give, your, give Jesus a round of applause because he's been real good to you. Test, 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 testing. From wherever you've been, come broken hearted, let rescue begin. Come find your mercy, O sinner, come kneel. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can heal. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can heal. So lay down your burden. There's rest for the weary, 
rest that endures. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can cure. So lay down your burden, lay down your shame. All who are broken, lift up your face. Test. Test. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Hope you're happy. Say amen. It's a joy of mine to be here with you at this empowerment evening. Let me see the hands of those who feel empowered. Amen. It's a joy to always hear the word of God being preached. It is a joy to see lives transformed. It is a joy to be a part of the process. Amen. And so with that in mind, I want to just wish every one of us God's blessing and to encourage us to experience that, in, that joy and see others empowered to live their life for Christ. So let us go out, continue to bring someone. Let not the last night come and you haven't brought someone else. Amen? Amen? I see the amens going down, huh? Amen? All right. God bless you. And may God, may we all continue to serve him faithfully. Good night, everybody. It's good to be back here again tonight. The last time I was here, we were under the tent. But you know, whether we have tent or we have no tent, the gospel has to be proclaimed. Amen? And I'm just happy to be able to come by 
to share with you another night. I'm going to sit tight and wait to hear the evangelist. But as Dr. No said, evangelist likes to preach when there are plenty people. So when you come tomorrow night, bring somebody else with you by the grace of God. God bless you and keep sweet in Jesus. Amen. Our God has been a faithful God. Somebody say amen. And this is the time in our program every Wednesday night we want to bring every burden to the Lord. Do you believe the God we serve is able? Have you seen him move in your experience? And at this time, we have a special prayer focus this evening. We want to invite all our pastors. Our pres the president is here. Dr. Wayne Knowles is here. Pastor Challenge is here. We're inviting all our pastors. We're also inviting all the elders who are here. We're inviting all the prayer warriors who are here, Bible workers who are here. And you're going to come and form a line right in the front. Chrissy is going to get ready to sing that beautiful song, Believe for It. And they're going to come to the front tonight. You're going to receive prayer from the individuals whom God has called and positioned to do a work on his behalf. So we just want you to form a line facing for us as we get ready for that prayer session tonight. It's an important night and what we will be doing after the song, we want you to come to the front. You will, you will just stand in front of one of these individuals. It might be one or two of you in front of an individual and you're going to present your request and that individual will say that special prayer. Let's get that song as we get ready.
asking you to stand at this time whenever you want to be standing at this time you're just standing and you're just coming forward pastor alfred welcome we invite you to come to the front to be one of our intercessors tonight and even as pastor alfred is coming we're asking those of you who just need special prayer tonight all our visiting friends just come forward come forward tonight just move from where you are just come now move from where you are and come uh, this is the moment when we'll be praying for you just move from where you are and come now Come down for this moment of prayer. Praise the Lord. All our visiting friends, we just want you to move from where you are and come now. Do you believe God is able? We have intercessors in the front who are ready to pray for you. Even our members who are here tonight, we have a special focus. We're praying for breast cancer victims. We're praying for anyone who has any form of illness. We're praying for anyone who just wants a God to do something in your experience. So come now, just move from your seat and come. We a special invitation. They're coming to our visiting friends. Just come now and you just get yourself positioned. The, the prayer warriors are here. They're positioned to pray for you. Hallelujah, they're coming tonight. Just move from your seat, especially our visiting friends. Come to the front now as we get ready for this moment of prayer. Is there one other person? We don't want any intercessor to be here without someone they're praying for. So let's, let's, is there somebody else? Praise the Lord. They're coming tonight. They're coming tonight. They're coming tonight. They're coming tonight. Praise the Lord. I'm still here in the front. So you can, you can come, you can come, you can come, you can come, come forward, come forward. And we're going to ask the intercessors to pray. Even at this time, we'll be praying for just about five minutes. And then I will close with the final prayer. Let's pray in a spirit of reverence unto our God.
so loving Lord even as the intercessors are praying I want to lift up every single person in this building unto you I pray in a special way for even those who have remained in their seats at this time oh God you know their unique situation and their challenges and today I pray even tonight that you'd be with them I want to lift up those who are watching on the YouTube channel even now. Uh, those who are sick physically, oh God. Uh, those who have a financial burden. Uh, those who have emotional stress and strain. Uh, those who are overwhelmed by circumstances of this life. You have said in your word that with our God, nothing will be impossible. You have said in your word that greater is he who is in us than he that is in the world. And tonight I bring every difficult situation. We know burdens are lifted at Calvary. And tonight we declare Jesus is very near. And we pray, even as the intercessors are praying, you've said uh, that if two or three individuals agree on anything, oh God, that it will be done. And so we pray in agreement tonight. We pray, oh God, that the Holy Spirit, who is able to interpret the prayer, and present it even before the Father as a sweet incense tonight, that the sweet Holy Spirit would allow all these petitions in this building, all at the same time, and to go before the throne of God. And we know that you will not only hear us, but you will respond. So we say hallelujah in advance. We say thank you, Jesus, in advance. We are excited for what our God will do in the lives of all his people. And tonight we thank you, we praise you, we magnify your name. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, amen and amen. God bless you as you go back to your seats. And we go with the assurance that our God will respond to our prayers.
Everybody. Good evening. Are you happy to be here this evening? Amen. How was your day? Good or great? <laughs> I had a little trip, short, maybe about two hours. We took a little tour around. You all roads real bad. Only I get road sickness today, you know. I had to abort the trip. I couldn't take it after two hours. I said, let's head back home. <laughs> I started to feel upset. My back started to hurt me. I said, no, 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 no. Let's abort this. We'll take the next half on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> well, I fix the road now. <laughs> hey, next time I come back, what do you think? Yeah? Yeah, it's adventure, preacher, adventure. If my back was good. <laughs> <laughs> so elections are over. Well, one party won and one party lost. Yeah. That's how it goes sometimes. That's eh? right. Unless there's a tie, somebody wins, somebody loses. Mm -hmm. But can I tell you that I'm on the winning side this Praise evening? God. <laughs> I don't know whether you voted for red, blue, or pink. I voted for Jesus. Amen. Amen. So I am always on the winning side. It doesn't matter what party come. It don't matter what party go. I am on the winning side. Let me see some winners here this evening. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I am extremely happy this evening to be here. We have a crew of visitors, about 15 of them. Amen. We're all here. Stand up now. Let, let me big all you up now. As we say in Trinidad, so all you come and hear my Trini accent. Let me big all you up now. <laughs> Stand. Amen, amen. Right, praise God, praise God. Let's gift them if they have not already been gifted. We have scrolls, we have champagnes, we have books. Give them something, let them know that we are so happy that you came out this evening. And please come again. Sister Christopher, happy to have you. And my friend, happy to have you. And who is Tashia? Which one is Tashia? Yes, man. So Tashia is a visitor who brought a visitor. Amen. Let's give Tashia a round of applause. Amen. Give us something nice. Thank you so much, visitors, for coming. Please come again. Invite someone. Invite, invite someone. You may have your seats. Thank you so much for coming. So members, we have some visitors doing better than all, all you. That car work tomorrow, right? Good. <laughs> so we are so happy to have you all. All our members, all our visitors, Pastor Dr. Carson Green, President, happy to have you. Dr. Pastor Knowles, happy to have you. Dr. Pastor K. White, happy to have you. Pastor Challenger, 
Pastor Alfred, happy to have you. Everybody, I'm just delighted to have you. And I trust that tonight's message will resonate somehow with you. You know, you, you would have, all of us would have studied God's word, but every time we go into God's word, there's always something fresh, something beautiful. I don't know how the Holy Spirit does it, but he always does it. And you're like, but I read this already, you know? But that is how potent the word of God is. Amen. So for those of you who are dressed in white, who won the gift? Sister Charmaine, I hope it was you. No, it wasn't you? Bogus. <laughs> Bogus. That is what has happened in elections. <laughs> Voter pardon. So who, so who win? Okay, 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 all right, all right, all right. <laughs> Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. That was a close one. I find they could have tied. Yeah, this is not politics. They could have tied. <laughs> eh? Yeah, they could have. Only give Sister Shaman something now. Nah. Give, give her something. Give her something. Let her, let her go home and feel nice. Right? She went all out. She put on the dazzle thing. She come over to a nice purse. Come on. Sister amen, Shaman, God amen, bless you. Amen, amen. Thank you all so much for your obedience, for your obedience. This is a challenger with that. Almost get it enough, but she had to do the promotion, so. So to him that overcometh, the Bible says, shall be clothed in white wow. raiment. Amen, amen. He said in Revelation 3, 18, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in fire, that thou mayest be rich, Oops. and white raiment, that thou may be clothed in. So this evening, no, could I tell you all that tomorrow we have a meeting here, right? And time to get to know him. It's the Father encounter. But more than that, we'll be doing a duet sermon. So tomorrow evening, Pastor White, my husband and I will be up here preaching one message together. Amen. All right? So you can't afford to miss tomorrow evening. Amen. If you didn't plan to miss, any evening, that would have had to have been last week, Friday, when the hurricane was here. Right? Since that's gone, you can't miss any other evening. So the Gaza encounter, that would be a, du a duet sermon. My husband and I will be up here doing that one tomorrow. So let's stand everywhere as we take our Bibles. By now, everybody should have walked with their Bibles. Well, you know how we do it here. This, for such a time as this empowerment series, Let's stand with our Bibles in hands. Remember that our phones are not our Bibles. Our iPads, tablets are not our Bibles. If you do not have your Bible, then lift your right hand as we say together, Holy Spirit, you, we are in your presence. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Join me now as I pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Use this piece of clay one more time. You've been with me in preparation. Now be with me in proclamation. And may your word be clear to every listener. Is my prayer with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 God bless you and thank you. Please be seated everywhere. Our message this evening is entitled what? How to, live. how to live your best life. Now, let me see any young person here who think they're living their best life. I just see all you on Facebook, you know, living my best life. Anybody here who think they're you living your best life? Come now, come meet me up here. Come, come, tell me what living your best life means. Come, pass this. Come, come. Come with your pretty red here. Come on. <laughs> Amen. Come, come, sis. Come, sis. Come, sis. <laughs> a brave soldier for Jesus. Amen. Amen. What's your name, sis? Janella Evans. Is this on? Test. It's on? All right. Tell us your name again. Janella Evans. Right. So tell us what in your mind is living your best life. In my opinion, living yeah. your best life is when you're living for God. Amen. Amen. High five. <laughs> like you're peeping my notes. Huh? I 
I don't like that. You mustn't peep in people's notes, right? <laughs> <laughs> Very good. God bless you. Give a round of amen, applause, everybody. <laughs> I should get my red Sabbath school as well. Praise God. Praise God. I am so happy that young people, young people today can find and know that living their best life is in Jesus. But could I tell you that there are many people today who for them living their best life means that they are set financially? Mm. That things nice, as we say in Trinidad, things nice. Things good, money flowing, you know? They partying every weekend, kills for so, you know? Yes, have on the best kit. I'm trying to, trying to do this thing like the young people. <laughs> They're having the best kit, fifteen hundred dollars. I don't know how much it does be here. When they buy their shoes, their wig, their hair, their, their, their toe, their eyebrow, their eyelash, everything. Living the nails, living their best life. Traveling the world for pleasure. If you don't see them on Facebook, connect. Tell people so if you don't see them. And underneath, living my best life. Can I tell you that there are successful people who have a lot of money in this life, but they are not satisfied? Well. And could I tell you that a high percentage of successful people are not ready for death? Mm. And sometimes the devil visits you when he knows that you are not ready for death. That's true. Because he knows that one more person to share hellfire with. Mm. Sometimes the devil uses different tactics on Christians. This, you know, she like what? Living your best life is living for Jesus. The devil is like that. So you know what he does? He discourages you. He sends things to depress you. That's right. He sends things to derail you. He sends things to let you think that the way you are walking is not the right way. That's right. Things going too slow mm. with Jesus. Where you thought you should have been, you're not. But look at your friend who not serving God and they seem to be further ahead in life. Huh? It's not easy, you know. But ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let me tell you about a man who lived his best life. Come on now. Solomon hmm. was the wisest man that ever lived beside Jesus. That's right. He was wealthy. All the women you could have think about, 700 wives, 200 concubines. Plenty of women. Some men can't handle one. I don't know how you used to handle all of that. Mm. Well. <laughs> Babe, you could, you could handle two of me? Huh? Well. <laughs> Trinidad, he would have saved both of them. <laughs> but Solomon had women to his leisure. Yes. He had all the pleasures he could think about. He built the house of God. He was the ruler of a kingdom. Mm -hmm. But while living for God, he lost focus. That's true. And sometimes we lose focus. focus. But at the end of his folly, at the end of his days, he said in Ecclesiastes 12, 13, and 14, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. What is it? Fear God and, do and what? keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Uh -huh. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. I told you last night that the law of God 
The Ten Commandments is the standard by which the characters and lives of men and women will be tested in the judgment. That's right. There is no wonder then that the Ten Commandments is under attack. Mm. Should we keep it or should we not? Well. After this message, I want it to be clear in your mind that God's law, the Ten Commandments, is still binding on all humans. Amen. It doesn't matter your nationality, your race, your color, your status. Your political affiliation, your religious affiliation, it does not matter. There is one rule. One rule, preacher. And if Solomon, after going through all of this in his life, could conclude that what? The whole duty of man is to fear God, fear God and keep his, his commandments. commandments. Could I tell you that the only way you can live your best life is to keep God's commandments? Amen. Many have tried women and have failed. Yes. Many have tried men and have failed. Yes. They have tried money and have failed. Yes. They still are dissatisfied. Mm. Proverbs 14 34 says, Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. That's right. And Romans 7 12 tells us, Wherefore the law is holy, holy. and the commandment is holy. holy and just and good. Let's go in our Bibles if you have them, or you can look on the screen at Exodus chapter 20. What book did I say? Exodus. And what chap chapter? Chapter 20. You are listening. Let us read, reader, verses 1 and 2. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the God thy God, the Lord thy God, which mm -hmm. have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Can I stop there to tell you that some people argue that the commandments are restrictive, mm. burdensome, a set of arbitrary rules that are too difficult for us to keep? Mm. But can I tell you this from the onset of this message that God will not take his people out of bondage to put them into bondage? Never, never. So when God gave them a commandment, the Ten Commandments, it was not to put them back in no. bondage. Set them free. It was to set them free. Amen. Could I submit to you this evening that the Ten Commandments are for our own good? Praise the Lord. I want you to tell me after we explore each one in turn, whether you think it is good or not. Hmm. Let's go to the first commandment. What does verse 3 say? Thou shalt have no other gods before me. In other words, thou shalt not make any common G.O.D. gods before the capital G-O-D, God. That's right. God is the creator of all things. Can I tell you, my friends, that according to Revelation 4.11, it says, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. Why? Because he created all things. And for his pleasure they were, they are and were, were created. created. But can I tell you that there are some people who put their vehicles in front of God? Well. If you see them polishing whole day. <laughs> don't touch the vehicle, you know. Well. They will get vexed. You ever see a holy man of God get vexed for touching the vehicle? <laughs> they don't drive too modern, you know. they park their vehicle and walk. You know. They say, better wash off my foot than the car wheel, yes? Well. <laughs> Can I tell you that some people idolize their houses? Can I tell you that there are parents who idolize their children? Straight talk, preacher. Straight talk. There are folks who idolize celebrities. There are folks who idolize politicians. 
There are folks who idolize religious leaders. While you can take counsel from these people, while you can like them or even love them, do not idolize them. That's right. They must not be put in front of God. That's right. In other words, if you have to choose between a political rally and a crusade, you must choose the crusade any day. <laughs> Seek ye First, the kingdom of God and his righteousness and what? All these things shall be added unto thee. You prefer to go a political party a rally and get five hundred dollars. Well, than to come to a crusade, you mightn't get money, but you'll get salvation. Amen. Which is more worth than money. Amen. Well, I have two more nights. <laughs> Hold back <laughs> yes, my friends, love people. Take care of animals. And when you buy your stuff, take good care of it. Yes. That's right. That's right. After all, you want to get good value for your money, okay? That's right. But do not put them before God. Amen. Do not put career before God. Classes, education, put nothing before God. Amen. Not even I told that. you last night, it didn't matter what education I am pursuing, I do not miss church. That's right. Seek ye first the kingdom of God mm -hmm. and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Mm -hmm. Can I tell you, you might move slower than some people, but that's all right. Mm -hmm. What God has for me, it's for me. Amen. You cannot take it away. That's right. So I will get there. Amen. And when I get there, I'll be happy. Praise because God. I know I would have done it God's way. Amen. 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 In the last days, my friends, it will boil down to worship. Mm -hmm. Satan himself tempted Jesus of all persons to worship him. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said to him, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only mm -hmm. shall thou serve. Mm -hmm. Revelation 14, 7 says, Fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come and worship him who did what? Made heaven and earth and the sea. It is either you worship God or you worship the devil. That's right. Could I tell you that by matter of elimination, if you have not chosen to worship God, then you are worshiping the devil? That's right. No middle ground. It no is middle that ground. simple. There is no state of in between you. That's right. You're either on God's side or the devil's side. Too many of us Want to have one foot in the river and one foot in the bank, it cannot work. It's either your two feet on sinking sand or your two feet on solid ground. Amen. Amen. To pass the allegiance test of worship in the end time, we must begin when? No. Is this commandment too difficult? No. I hear you say no, preacher. Right. Let's go to verses 4 to 6. What does the word of God say, reader? Exodus 20. Thou shalt not make unto thee. Read away your Bible. Mm -hmm. Read together. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image yes. or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath, mm -hmm. or that is in the water under the earth. Yes. Nor yes. serve them. For I, the Lord thy He's God, what? am a jealous <laughs> yes. God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me, and keep my commandments. I never get it. Mm -hmm. Why would you go and make something mm -hmm. out of wood, clay, 
whatever it is, mm -hmm. and then say, this is my God. How does that work? Mm -hmm. You become the creator, right? When you create something, you become the creator. That's right. So now the creator going and worship the creature. Hmm. How does that work? So the Bible is saying, do not make anything to be your God. You already have a God in, Heaven. therefore worship him, him oh. and him only. Why? Because he is the creator of heaven and earth. But he also says he's a jealous God. Amen. In other words, it's like you have your husband. You think my husband wants to know that I have a man on this side? Well. Yeah, he wants to know that? Well. <laughs> I'm not able to you know. <laughs> Come on, preacher. <laughs> when you are dating, more so, it has become a problem. You and your girlfriend or your boyfriend walking down the road, and somebody only do so. And if that man I only twitch, you tell him so. Yeah. A lie, woman? Mm -hmm. It's true. <laughs> it's like the man shouldn't have no eye after he see you. <laughs> <laughs> Stay focused. So just like you want to guard your loved one, so too God wants to guard you. Jealous God, amen. He says, I want you for myself. That's right. You cannot have two masters. No. You cannot serve God and Satan at the same time. No. No deputy is essential here. No. I am everything you need, he says. Amen. God is holy. Mm -hmm. Psalm 99 9 says, Exalt the Lord our God and worship him at his holy hill. For the Lord our God is holy. holy. So worship him and serve him only. only. Is this a commandment that is too hard? No, not at all. Exodus 20, verse 7. What does the word of God say, reader? The third commandment. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Uh huh. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. In other words, when we use the Lord's name, we should use it genuinely. Amen. Respectfully. Yes. Reverently yes. and in awe. Amen. I don't like when nobody call me Natasha. No, say my name nice. <laughs> Natasha. Correct. Amen. Eh? A correct preacher. I don't even like to see my name misspelled. Mm. So I could imagine God. He said, don't take my name in vain. That's right. Don't curse using my name. Precious. Don't swear using my name. When you use my name, it must be for good. Amen. Don't use my name for evil. That's All right. that is taking God's name in vain. Some of us use God's name in vain, you know. When we say, oh God... Kill my enemy for me, please. Mm. Well. Some mm. of us pray those kind of prayers. But can I tell you, as my husband said, never pray for your enemies to die? Mm. How else would the Lord spread a table before you in the presence of your enemies? Yes. If they die? Leave them there. So when God bless you, they will see. <laughs> Don't waste a prayer on them. Say, Lord, reward them according to their works, and he will know what to do. Right? Amen. Roger, can you bring my... Um, yeah, for me, please. This one is dying. By God's name, devils tremble. By his name, healing takes place. Amen. By his name, storms and hurricanes, even like Tammy, can change course. That's right. By his name, marriages are restored. Amen. By his name, victory is won. So do not take his name in faith. Amen. A powerful name. A powerful name. Psalm 119 says, holy and reverent 
is your name. Amen. Is this asking too much? Not at all, preacher. What does verses 8 to 11 say, reader? Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Yes. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Mm -hmm. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For what? For in six days yes. the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. In other words, put simply, the fourth commandment tells us, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Notice that this is the only commandment that starts with remember. And yet, many seem to forget. Why is that? All God asks for, he gives us six days. He said, do what you want. Mm. Six days. Work and play. But the Sabbath is mine. mine. Oh, day of rest and gladness. Oh, day. Oh, day of joy and life. Mm -hmm. Oh, balm of care and sadness. Oh, most beautiful, most bright. Amen. Can I tell you that the Sabbath is a happy day? It is. It's a day to celebrate, man. Yes. I don't know about you, but I won't be looking so young without the Sabbath. Well, come on, preacher. Thank God for the Sabbath you get to rest. Amen. Otherwise, we will work ourselves to death. That's right. Thank God for the Sabbath rest. Amen. What do we do on the Sabbath? Oh, well, them is only go to church. No, we do more than that. Mm -hmm. We worship our God and we Amen. give him undivided attention. Amen. We recognize him as the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. We recognize him as the creator of the universe. I do not understand why people cannot understand what day is the seventh day. Well. I learned from since I'm a child, the days of the week are Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Friday, Saturday. But they learned that in Antigua too. So they learned that all over. All over. But within recent times, I've seen the calendar start to change with Monday as the first day of the week in man's failed attempt to make it that Sunday will become the seventh day. Mm -hmm. But can I tell you that God's word will never change? Never. Not one jot or one tittle shall be removed from God's word. Amen. Man can attempt all they want to change the Sabbath. It will not change according to God's record. Amen. Could I tell you that the reason we keep the Sabbath is not because it's Adventist Sabbath? Mm. Come on now. It is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. God. Amen. Amen. It is God's Sabbath. Make it clear, preacher. Sometimes, on many occasions, you know, during um, I'm so short. During Easter, there is never a confusion as to which day is the first day of the week. Not at all. Pastor White, no confusion. Eh? Good Friday. The day Jesus died. That's fine. That's right. Saturday, glorious Saturday. Mm. The day he rested in his grave. Mm -hmm. Then the Bible says the first day of the week, early Sunday morning, he was resurrected. resurrected. Amen. And so they welcome and they celebrate Easter Sunday, first day of the week. <laughs> so why is only Easter, you know, when is the first day of the week? Well... So common sense only around Easter? No. So, walking so if Sunday is the first day of the week, then as you go through, a little child will be able to tell you that Saturday is the seventh, seventh day. day of the week. Mm -hmm. And it is not seventh-day Adventist Sabbath. It no, is God's Sabbath. Sabbath. Amen. 
Amen. And uh, another thing that, you know, we as Seventh-day Adventists, I love about the Sabbath, is that we put aside, as the Bible says, all secular work. But oftentimes, I observe worshipers on Sunday, they will go to church, and then they'll go to the supermarket. They will go to church, and then they will go and cook, wash, doesn't matter. But God has set aside this day, the Sabbath day, as a holy day. That's right. In other words, a day of rest. A day of reflection, a day of relationship building between us and God and our okay. fellow men. Amen. Is this one too hard? Not at all. I asked that somewhere and they told me, preacher, to be honest, it is hard. Hmm. You know why? They hmm. said my best business day. Hmm. That's the day that make the most money. Mm. So if I am to leave my business to come and get baptized, preacher, I would lose a lot of money. Well. Mm. But I join with the psalmist to tell you, mm. I've been young. Oh, come on. But I'm older now. Yeah. <laughs> and I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Yeah. Nor his seed begging yeah. bread. That's right. Could I tell you that God will take care of you? Yes. Could I tell you that cattle upon a thousand hills belong to God? That's right. So could I tell you that what you are making on Sabbath, God can make you make that on a Wednesday? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God provides for his children yes. and God responds to faithfulness. Hallelujah. So if by chance there is somebody here who is thinking I cannot give my life to God because I have to work on Sabbath, can I tell you that if you step out in faith, God will hold you up. Amen. He will not leave you That's right. by yourself. That's right. He will hold you up. Amen. He will hold you up. The first four commandments are about our relationship with God. The next six commandments are about our relationship with each, each other. Let's go through them quickly. What does the fifth commandment say? Honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. You want to live your best life? Yes. Honor your father and your mother, Correct. and you will have long days. Amen. Some of the things I see children getting away with now, we could not have gotten away with that some years mm. ago. The parents these days take a lot from children. I see children behaving like they are the parents. When they tell their mother they want that in the supermarket, their mother cannot tell them no. Well. Don't dare tell them no. They will throw themselves on the ground. Yes. Long time you could have hit them a slap. No children rights. Hmm. Straight talk. But my Bible tells me, children, obey your parents in the Lord for this, this is... is right. Honor your father and your mother, for this is the only commandment with a promise. promise. I see children now hitting their parents. You couldn't even dare think it long time. Well. You think it, you get a lash. Yes. You used to wonder how she know I think in that yes. <laughs> A cough preacher, a cough. You get some hard cough yeah. <laughs> at what I can say. Yeah. But the way the world is going, Second Timothy has come to pass that children have become disobedient to parents. That's right. That's right. Teachers have no say anymore. No. I see things on Facebook with children beating teachers. Mm. Oh. I tell you, those are things we couldn't even think about long oh, time. That's right. If you give your teacher a little lip before you reach home and it had no cell phone, then your mother used to know how, I don't know. 
<laughs> we had no phone home, but mommy will still know if we misbehave at school. Amen. Ouch on it. That's the ouch. Before we reach home, no? Yes. But now they had to get cell phones to go to school. Cell phone what? We had no cell phone and we went to school and back without no problem. You give them cell phone, you know what? You give them pornography too. You give them all the evil on the internet when you give them the cell phone. Because they don't want a normal cell phone, you know. Them 12 year olds have better cell phone than me. iPhone and what? Samsung, what? You see, I don't even know. Yes. <laughs> well. Can I speak to some children here this evening? Yes. Children, honor your parents. Obey Amen. your parents when they are giving you good advice. Amen. Listen to them. Amen. Could I tell you to take care of your parents as they get older? Yes. Yes. Could I tell you? If right now you know you told your mother something that you should not have, when you go home, tell mommy sorry. That's right. Please. If you want to live your best life, honor your father and your mother. Amen. And you will have long days. Amen. Blessed days, preacher. Is Amen. this too hard to do? This is a good commandment. That's to right. help relationships between parents and children. Amen. What does the next commandment say? Thou shalt not kill. Don't take life. You didn't give life, then don't take life. That's right. Deliberate or intentional killing of another human being is in violation of God's commandments. That's right. But could I tell you that Jesus in elaborating on this said in Matthew tw in Matthew 5, 21 to 24, what did he say, reader? You have heard of it that it was said. Of them in all time, thou shalt not, not kill. kill. Mm -hmm. And whomsoever shall kill shall yes. be in danger, in danger of, of the, the judgment. Uh -huh. But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause mm -hmm. shall be in danger of the judgment. Wow. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. Mm. In other words, some of us think we clear when this commandment is concerned. Mm. I only kill mosquito. Hmm. But can I tell you that sometimes we kill each other by our words? Oh, yes. You're just like your father, mm. you're good for nothing. You will amount to nothing. You killed that person. Hmm. Their purpose, you've killed it. And if, it, if God doesn't intervene, that child will become useless in life. Kill them. Dead. Someone comes to church for the first time. They went up and do something. Are that the best you could have do? Kill them. Kill them. To sister, good job for your first time. And maybe if you have a few pointers, give them it nicely. Amen. But always say positive things first. That's right. Sometimes we become so angry, it talks about anger. And anger can lead to hatred, and hatred could lead to murder. Mm -hmm. Could I tell you that sometimes we didn't kill them physically? But we don't kill them when we mine. Hmm. If I only get the opportunity, eh? What I would do to see and what I wouldn't do. Well. He don't think it. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is. He. That's why verse 23 says, Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar yes. and remember that you had an ought against your brother, what to do? Leave, Leave the gift. Go, Go your way. First, be reconciled to thy brother and then come and offer thy gift. Can I speak to church people come here on, this evening? Come on, speak, preacher. Speak, preacher. Speak. We come to church holding each other in our hearts. 
Come on. Speak, preacher. Speak. We come and we pray and march into Zion, beautiful Zion, which Zion. Not with that mindset. Not with an unforgiving spirit. Leave your gift by the altar. Go and make it right and then come back. First. That's right. I didn't say it. Amen. That's the word of God. Amen. Straight talk. Straight talk. I don't preacher. murder. But we murder them already in our mind. Mm. Go and make it right. Yes. And that's the only way you can come back and worship me in spirit and in truth. Amen. Is this commandment favorable? Yes. Is it, it difficult? No. Sometimes it is. But all things are possible, possible. to those who seek God's help. Verse 14. What does it say? Thou shalt not commit adultery. This is about respecting marriage between man and woman. Amen. Respecting and keeping our marriage vows made before God and man. Not interfering in the marriage of others. It's also about respecting your body. That's right. And the body of your spouse. Amen. Could I tell some young lady mm. that if a married man disrespects his wife and comes and sleep with you, who tells you yeah. that it will be any different if he divorces his wife to marry you? Well, he already has no respect for her, for his wife. He has no respect for his body. He has no respect for you. Yes. Therefore, shall a man leave his father and his mother and cleave unto his wife, and the two shall be. One. one flesh. Amen. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no man or woman put, put asunder. asunder. Amen. Leave the married man alone. Amen. Leave the married woman alone. It doesn't matter if they have been separated for 20 years. As long as they are not divorced, leave them alone. Amen. Leave it alone. Amen. Leave it alone. Amen. Jesus, in commenting on this, says, You have heard it said, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you, who has ever looked at a woman to lust after her had already committed adultery in his heart. That's right. Sometimes the man in your head is not the man in your bed. Hey. He that had an head to Say that again, head. preacher. Say that again, preacher. <laughs> well. Is this commandment too difficult? Well, not at all, preacher. For some, not at all. But for others, it is. Mm -hmm. It's hard to see the frog tail passing mm. with all the beautiful shape and leave it alone. Well. But could I counsel you this evening from please, Matthew 26, please. 41, watch and pray that he enter not into the temptation. Mm -hmm. The spirit indeed is willing but the flesh, flesh is weak. In other words, the only way to overcome any watch temptation mm -hmm. is to watch and pray. Only God can help you. Amen. Amen. And sometimes we have, uh, we commit adultery without even having sexual relations. Mm -hmm. You are so emotionally intertwined with that person that you cannot commit to your own husband. You are there in body, but your spirit isn't there. You are not present in the room. Straight talk, preacher. Straight talk. Those who have an ear to hear, let them hear. Let him hear. Verse 15, what does the word of God say? Thou shall not steal. In other words, don't steal anybody's property. That's right. Don't even steal love. Mm. Just don't steal at all. Well... Don't take anything that does not belong to you. That's right. Ask for something if you want it. Three answers they can give you. Yes, no, or wait. Mm -hmm. 
And my mother always used to say, go and work for it. Or do it out. Because godliness with contentment is... It's great godliness. Great thing. Leave people things alone. Mm -hmm. I know sometimes this could be difficult. But leave it alone. Amen. I know sometimes we have some kleptomanias. And this is a serious condition that they need help for. That's right. If so, seek help. Seek help from God and seek help from a mental counselor. Amen. Verse 16 says, Thou shalt not be a false witness against thy neighbor. Yes. In other words, thou shalt not make false accusations against anyone. Mm -hmm. Or dishonestly set out to blemish someone else's reputation. That's right. Do not make accusations that you have no evidence of. Amen. Many people in an attempt to look good mm. say all kinds of things about somebody else for them to look bad. That's right. Assassinating your character. Mm -hmm. The older folks may, may, may be familiar with the little Calypso teacher pussy say if you tell a lie you're going to <laughs> hell as soon as you die. <laughs> I wish that was so. <laughs> But thank God I'm not God. Yes. <laughs> but all of us would end up in hell. Well. But while we do not believe in going to hell as soon as you die, or, or in going to heaven as soon as you die, telling a lie is a serious offense. It is. A serious violation. Mm. And if left unconfessed, you will go to hell. That's the reality. We talk about white lies. 99% truth and 1% lie is? Lie. But that's what the devil did in the garden yes. of Eden. It is deception. It is. Is this commandment too difficult? No. Let's read the 10th commandment. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. Yes. nor his manservant, uh -huh. nor his maidservant, uh -huh. nor his ox, yes. nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. You know, I, I, love, I just love God. He likes to reiterate things. He doesn't tell you don't commit adultery. You know, he tells you don't covet mm -hmm. your neighbor's wife, mm -hmm. the manservant, the maidservant, nothing that your neighbor have. Mm -hmm. In other words, appreciate what? He have. Appreciate what you have. Mm-hmm. Avoid looking and longing for other people's things. The grass always seems greener on the other side. That's right. If their grass seems greener, get some water and wet yours. Amen. Amen. And if you run out of water, buy some green carpet and carpet it. <laughs> to go always look green. Amen. Evergreen. <laughs> you understand? But stop being long eye and watching other people think. Well. You see me, I'm a slim husband, you want him. Oh, yeah. Go get your own. <laughs> Simple as that. Straight up, preacher. <laughs> Go get your own. Well. Thou shalt not covet. Let me tell you something. There is something out there for all of us, you know. Amen. You see. Brother, so and so with the big house, leave him. That's you right. don't know how he reached there. You stay in your small house until God ready to bless you. Amen. Sister, we just rub ourselves of blessings Amen. by coveting other people's blessings. Just wait on the Lord. Amen. Be of good courage and he shall direct your path. Wait, Amen. I say on the Lord. Amen. Your opportunity is coming. Your door will be open soon. Just wait for it. Amen. Praise the Lord. I saw sometimes, sometimes we just force doors open. And when we force doors open, you know what happened on the other side? We want to close it back quick mm. because that wasn't for you. Mm -hmm. Wait on the Lord. Amen. Wait on the Lord. What he has for you, you will get it. Amen. Wait on the Lord. That's right. And trust me, he will do his thing in good time. Amen. 
God will do his thing. Be content. Be grateful for what you have. Because on the other side of that is greed mm -hmm. and love of money. And where it ends up, the Bible says that the love of money is the, the root of, of all, all evil. evil. It can lead you to do all kinds of things. To leave right. it alone. Mm -hmm. Is this commandment too hard? No. I want to encourage you this evening to trust God's plan Amen. for your life. Amen. He does it best. Amen. He wants to do something great in your life. The only reason he gave us the Ten Commandments is because he loves us. Amen. Amen. Many homes have rules. Am I speaking the truth? Yes. Many businesses have rules. Am I speaking the truth? Correct. So God has his own rules and his own laws. And it aligns perfectly with who he is. God is love. Amen. God is merciful. Yes. He values human life. He values relationships. He values our belongings. He values our devotion. He values what, mo what is most important to us and to him, our salvation. Amen. God wants you to live your best life your abundant life, your ultimate life. He wants you to be happy. He wants you to be whole. And he said, if you only follow the manufacturer's guidelines, you will be living your best life. Praise God. Following God's law, my friends, will lead us on the path of righteousness. Amen. Following God's law will lead us into right doing and right living. Following God's law will lead us into long life. The Bible tells us for the wages of sin is death. But it goes on to say, but the gift of God, but the gift of God, but the gift of Come God, what now. you did not deserve Come is on. eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Following God's law is really something that God gives to us Amen. because he loves us. Amen. He wants to save you from the consequences of sin. Mm -hmm. He wants to save you from eternal death. And he wants to give you eternal life instead. Amen. He wants you to enjoy wonderful relationships now with your parents, with your siblings, with your spouse. He wants you to, to, to love each other and to live in good stead. Amen. God's law does not restrict us. No. Rather, God's law frees us. Amen. For who the Son of God sets free, free we indeed. are free indeed. Amen. Can I tell you this evening yes. that those who are saved in the end will be a commandment keeping people? Amen. Can I tell you this evening that God's law cannot change until heaven and earth pass away. Not one shot, not one tittle will pass from the law of God That's until right. it is accomplished. Amen. Can I tell you that it's important to understand that it's in our keep that it is not in our keeping the law that cleanses us, but our Savior himself that Amen. cleanses us. The law points out sin, but Jesus saves us. Amen. Amen. He says to you, if you love me, keep, my, keep command. my commandments. Keep my commandments. It's just like a married couple who takes their marriage vows. This is just your marriage vow to God. Not because they have to, but because they love to. Amen. <laughs> Jesus kept the law demonstrating that it should be kept. And demonstrated that it can be kept. Amen. In John 15, 10, Jesus says, If he keep my commandments, he shall abide in my love. Oh. Even as I kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. Amen. Sometimes, however, our best efforts to keep God's commandments will sometimes fail. But I'm happy to report Come that on. Ephesians 2, 8 and 10 says, Come For on. by grace you have been saved Come through on. faith, Come and are not of yourself. No. It is the gift of God, Come not on. a result of works. Let any man shall boast. That's right. My friends, for you to live your best life, the Ten Commandments must be part of your experience. Mm. God wants you to live to please him Amen. as you live out your dash. Amen. When we follow God's word, we not only live our best life now, 
but we live our best life throughout eternity. Praise it's a win-win situation. Hallelujah. I told you last night, and I reiterated this night, that the law of God is what is used as a yardstick in the judgment. So. Therefore, you cannot get away from the law of God. No. So if I were you, I would accept the law of God, and I would try by God's grace to live according to his blueprint. Amen. Revelation 14, 12 says, here is the patience of the mm -hmm. saints. Here are they that do what? Keep, Keep the command. commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. The last book, the last chapter of the Bible says, in Revelation 22, 14, blessed are they. Hey. Blessed or happy are they that but do his commandments that they might have what? Right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Hallelujah. Praise God. Do you want to enter the gate? Want yes. to enter into the gates of the Amen. city? Do you want to have rights to the tree of life? Yes. Do you want to be saved when Jesus yes. comes? My friends, and I want to tell you, I want to encourage you to take God's blueprint yes. to heart. Mm. This evening, as we sing this song, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be what? Happy, Happy in, in Jesus. Jesus but to trust and obey. Yes. As we sing this song, we invite you to stand with us. And we sing together because we are recommitting ourselves to God. We want to say, Lord, I want to continue to trust you. I want to obey you. Let's stand everywhere as we sing together. Trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus than to trust and obey. Let's sing the first stanza. the commandments because I want to have right to the tree of life I want to be saved when you come I want to live my best life now and when you come I want to live eternally abundantly ultimately why not press to this altar as we sing the next verse not a shadow, not a shadow. yes not a cloud in the sky Visitors, I want to invite you to come to Jesus this evening. I want to give somebody the opportunity this evening to be baptized. You have not yet given your life to the Lord. You are struggling to say yes to Jesus. But I want to ask you this evening to make that step and God will do the rest. It's not going to be easy, but it's going to be worth it. I want to see you on that sea of glass. I want to give you that opportunity to give your life to Jesus this evening. Is there somebody here who wants to say, I want to be baptized on Sabbath? Just lift your hands. You want to be baptized because the Bible says that those who are baptized shall be saved. You want to get baptized on Sabbath? Just lift your hands wherever you are. Heaven is taken record. Heaven is taken record. You want to give your life to Jesus. Is it going to be easy all days? No. But I can tell you this. God is going to be right there with you. He's going to hold your hands through those difficult days. Will the devil tempt you? Yes. But can I tell you that you would be able to withstand with God right there by your side? So come my friends, 
Do not let this opportunity pass you by. If you walk out of here tonight without giving your life to the Lord, know that your blood will not be on my shoulder. For I've placed before you life and death. And I beg of you to choose life. I've placed before you blessings and cursing. And I beg of you this evening to choose blessings. So that both you and your house would live. Let's sing that final verse. Then in fellowship, then in fellowship sweet, we will all sit at his feet. The green. to trust. I pass you over to Dr. Pastor Green as he makes the final appeal and prayer. Before we pray tonight, I want to remind somebody that the best time to serve Jesus is now. The scripture says today is the day of salvation. And I've come to realize that whenever we are confronted with that decision to serve Jesus, the devil always makes it seem difficult. I remember my own experience. I tried to step to the altar and I literally felt something holding me back. But thank God, God is always more powerful than the devil. You know, scripture also says, What shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world or lose his own soul? And I'm going to pray in a little while, but I think it necessary to say this. In 19, not 19, in 2007, I was invited to do a crusade in Hatton in Grace Farm. We had a pastor by the name of Espinoza. He was pastor in the Grace Farm Church then, along with the Steps to Christ congregation. And I preached for four weeks in Hatton. And one day we went visiting, encouraging people to serve the Lord. We met a girl, 15 years of age. And we invited her to the meetings. And I remember that Sunday afternoon, she said, listen, I can't come tonight, but I'll come tomorrow night. And we encouraged her. And Pastor Espinosa said, I'll go back for you tomorrow night. And he went back for her. She made an excuse and said she can't come. But the next night, and the next night he went back for her. And while she was making another excuse, her friends said, why don't you tell the pastor what you told us? And she said, I'm too young to serve Jesus now. I want to party some more. I want to enjoy life some more. I want to say to somebody tonight, you don't know what living is until you start living for Jesus. You know, that series of meetings came to an end. Just like this one will come to an end. And that lady, young girl, never came to serve Jesus. We took the tent down the Sunday morning. The crusade finished the Sabbath. We took the tent down the Sunday morning. And Monday morning, as I was preparing to go to work, my phone rang. It was Pastor Espinosa. He said, Pastor, you remember that girl that we pleaded to come and serve Jesus? And she said she was too young. 
she got ill last night they called the ambulance and before she reached the hospital she died too young to serve Jesus but not too young to die now is the day of salvation and I want to plead with somebody tonight I don't know who you are but I believe there is somebody here who needs to make a decision for Jesus if you're here and you have not surrendered to Jesus now is the accepted time now is the day of salvation not tomorrow tomorrow may be too late it is a wise thing to give your life to Jesus today with him there is peace there is joy there is the assurance that come what may it will be well with your soul so I want to pray for somebody tonight. You may have a situation. I don't know what your situation is, what your circumstance may be, but I want to let you know that there is nothing too hard for God to do. Hallelujah. Nothing too hard for God. So won't you give it to Jesus? Every head is bowed, every eye is closed. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If somebody wants to say, I want to serve Jesus tonight. Just raise your hand. You have not yet surrendered to him and you want to give it to Jesus now. Just raise your hand. I see the hand. Is there another hand? Is there another hand? God is watching. I want to pray for somebody tonight. Your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed. Almighty Father, creator and sustainer, redeemer and friend, we come tonight saying what a friend we have in jesus all our sins and griefs to bear what a privilege to be able to bring everything to you in prayer lord we are thankful that where sin abounds grace that much more abound some of us lord have been been bruised and battered but you are our sufficiency we are thankful that no matter how far we have gone, you are able. And so tonight, we lift before you individuals hearing my voice even now. Oh God, I pray that you will extend your mercy to that young man who tonight may be thinking, I'll do it one of these days. The devil would have him believe that he has tomorrow. But teach somebody tonight that to say no to Jesus is to say yes to the devil. Let somebody else understand that the first time is always the best time to serve Jesus. So somebody may be here for the first time tonight and may be thinking, I don't know enough. Let them know that with the knowledge of knowing that you love and care for them, that's enough. Hallelujah. That if they put their hands in your hands, you will lead them all the way. So, oh God, touch that someone. Oh God, a few persons raise their hands tonight to say they want to follow you. They want to be saved when you come. I pray, O oh God, that you will give them the assurance even now that you're more than able. They may be thinking that they are weak, but all of us are weak. But thank you, Jesus, you are strong. For where I am weak, you are strong. And it is not my strength, it is not our strength, it is your strength. And you have promised that you will be a rock and our sure foundation. So touch that someone and heal and deliver and save, oh God. Give them the courage to stand firm, to stand on your side. And oh God, for those who have already made that decision, seal their faith. Write their names down in the book of life. And may no man, no woman, 
no situation ever be able to pluck them out of your hand. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, oh God, what a wonderful experience it is to know that it is well with our souls. Teach somebody the joy of living for Jesus tonight. And power adventure, there is somebody here who thinks that they're too messed up, too tangled up, too tied up to stand for you. Oh God, let them know that that's the devil's lie. Let them know that whatever their situation, you are able to save, to deliver. You are able to give them the victory. And I pray that ere they leave this place tonight, they will hear this appeal ringing in their ears until, oh God, they shall cry out, I yield, I yield, I can no longer hold back. Save us, oh God, and keep us faithful until you shall come. And oh God, we pray because you are a God of love, because you are a God of mercy, the individual who was too shy to come to the altar. After the benediction, give them the courage to stick around to talk to one of the pastors. Because, oh God, it makes no sense to turn away from Jesus. So we place every man, every woman, every boy, every girl in your hands tonight. And pray that you will give some soul the victory. And we thank you for hearing and for answering. In the precious name of Jesus we pray. Amen and amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Green. God bless you as we sing this song to close. Don't leave here, my brother and my sister, without giving your names to one of us. I have four... Two ushers, please, two ushers, please give out these scrolls to two visitors on this side and two visitors on this side. Can I have two ushers to assist us? As we sing this song to close, visitors, as you leave, please do not leave without recording your name in the Lamb's Book of Life by giving somebody, the usher, myself, any one of the pastors, your name for baptism. God bless you and we'll see you tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. Let's sing together as we go. Of my life.